Welcome back to Prehistoric SeaWorld! It's time to bring in the big guns, as today we'll be adding the Mosasaurus Lagoon and also the enclosure for the Spinosaurus, as well as the mixed herbivore enclosure for European herbivores. Those will be some of the main attractions of our park, so I really can't wait for you to see it all! Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. It feels so good to be back in the prehistoric sea world. It feels so good to be back to be recording for you, to be talking to you and of course to be building our park together here. Today we'll have a very special episode because we'll be adding two of the main attractions uh, to our prehistoric sea world, the Mosasaurus and the Spinosaurus, so two big and chunky creatures that I just couldn't imagine this park without. I had them planned from the very beginning of this series and I knew that I wanted to have them both somewhere towards the end so that the main attraction is not at the entrance or anything. The guests need to explore the park a bit to get to them. I know that it has been a while since the last episode. There was just a lot of things going on both with Planet Zoo and just, you know, holidays for me at going Going away and stuff I wasn't too active here or here on YouTube but right now I plan to wrap up this series because this is actually the uh, second to last building episode of uh, prehistoric sea world unfortunately I love this park so much and it will be so hard to say goodbye to it uh, but yeah today we'll build a big chunk of the park actually and in the next episode we'll do sort of like filling the gaps and finishing touches uh, I still have like an aviary plant, I still have some smaller dinos plant, but this is all saved for the last episode. And in this one we will add of course the Mosasaurus, as I told you, we'll add the Spinosaurus and we'll also build a big herbivore enclosure for the European dinos. I really wanted to build something like this. If you guys have been following this series, you know that I am trying to uh, put the dinos here in the enclosures based on the continents or, or the regions that they are coming from so it all makes a bit more sense not to just you know randomly pick the species and throw them together <laughs> into enclosures uh, so today I decided to go for, for Europe uh, I am from Europe so I decided to uh, you know uh, pay homage to this part of the world in one of the like most uh, attractive parts of our park so we have the Mag Megalodon here uh, we have uh, of course the Mosasaurus right now the Spinosaurus and we also have we'll have some other attractions and we also have will have this beautiful enclosure for the iguanodon that I really wanted to have in this park I think it suits so well uh, to this uh, theme of the aquatic or semi-aquatic dinos uh, or the dinos that just lived near the water and with this I will have the polacanthus as well uh, I read that those uh, two guys actually uh, used to live together and uh, they even herd together uh, and there's all there will also be uh, the stegosaurus living, living in there. I know that it can be a bit shocking to some of you, but I actually found out that uh, the fossils of the stegosaurus were also found in Europe, not only in North America. So uh, it appears that stegosaurus also was present in Europe. And I think that those three in one enclosure look just amazing. But of course, you'll be able to see this all in uh, uh, in the real time tour that will, I will do after the uh, speed build part of this video will be done. So because this is such a big attraction for our park, I mean the Mosasaurus Lagoon and the Spinosaurus enclosure that will be just opposite it, uh, I wanted to make a, like a little plaza for it to make it a bit more special if it makes any sense uh, and I wanted to make it a bit more unique so I did those like wavy paths that lead to the uh, viewing galleries. I thought of them as some um, rivers for example just to keep to this water theme uh, there's also a lot of fountains on this plaza and of course I added some animities and also some tables for the guests just to make it a bit more 
nice looking. Uh, and also, this is probably the last plaza that we will build in the park. Uh, like behind this on the right hand side, there will only be like a small enclosure and the aviary that we'll add in the next episode. Uh, and yeah, this is the, the Mosasaurus Lagoon is actually the last lagoon in the entire prehistoric sea world, which is crazy. Uh, we are so close to finishing this series. Uh, and uh, of course, even though the support for the Jurassic World Evolution 2 is probably over, uh, we don't get any news, any updates uh, for, uh, from Frontier about this game. Uh, I wish that they actually told us that this is over. Like, um, I don't know why they are not doing stuff like this. Uh, but yeah, maybe this is their strategy to keep us waiting. Uh, but we also know that there will be a third uh, Jurassic World Evolution coming probably next year so maybe that's why they are not updating this game anymore but this doesn't mean that i am going anywhere uh, after i'll be done with this series i will of course do a final tour of the entire park and then i think i will start another series i will have to see how it will uh you know go with also the planet coaster 2 coming out because i am sure that i also want to start a new series in planet coaster and with all the Planet Zoo stuff, uh, it will be probably hard, but I definitely want to keep playing Jurassic World Evolution 2 because I really, really enjoy this game and I love dinosaurs, so I love creating those enclosures and recording those videos for you guys and uh, seeing that all of, a lot of you are tuning in into all of those episodes is so, so, so cool. Uh, so thank you for that. Thank you to everyone who is still watching my uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2 videos. I know that they don't get as much uh, views as the Planet Zoo uh, videos. It probably will be wiser for me to just focus on one game when it comes to YouTube algorithm and anything. Uh, but I decided not to do it because I like this game and I like recording and I know that so many of you are enjoying this series. And you know, YouTube works in sort of this way that uh, when I am uploading this video, it gets of course recommended to all of my subscribers. And if they like it, if they uh, like decide to watch it, to click on it, then it is uh, like, recommending the video into the wilder audience it is all based on you guys the people who are subscribed and of course i probably have more people subscribed to my channel who are interested into in planet zoo who wait for planet zoo videos so that's why when they see uh, the new Jurassic World evolution 2 video on my channel they don't click on it uh, and that's why the videos are not recommended to wider audience i'm not a huge fan of this i think that we should have more freedom of you know choosing the games that we want to play on our channels for example or just recording videos or anything we want but it is all about our subscribers right now it used to be different back then uh, that's why my first Jurassic World Evolution 2 videos for example have so many views and the latest one are not doing the, this so well but I am not too bothered by this I'm just mentioning this because I saw someone uh, like wondering in the comments why uh, my videos from Jurassic World Evolution 2 just don't get as many views as the ones from Planet Zoo. Uh, this is all because of that. Okay, after I was done decorating the plaza and also decorating the uh, lagoon for the Mosasaurus, where I added the kelp, I added the underwater viewing galleries, of course the shark feeders and so on, it was time to move into uh, the Spinosaurus enclosure. And in here I of course wanted to use uh, the map and the natural border for the enclosure. Uh, that is this mountain that we have in here. Uh, so the fences will be only in the front of the enclosure. Uh, there will be a huge lake for them, uh, for it actually, because I will only have one uh, of the Spinosaurus here. The enclosure looks a bit small, but when you will see the Spinosaurus inside of it, it is actually not that small. It has still plenty of room, but I had to be careful with the size of it because I still have some enclosures planned for this area and the space is very limited. Um, so I added a lot of uh, trees and different bushes in the background of this enclosure just to make it look, uh, just to lose sort of like this uh, end of it or just make it look bigger uh, to hide the potential fence that would be in there. I added some rocks where I thought 
they should be added uh, and of course added the feeder and that was it it was actually a very quick build I, and i think it looks still very good uh, and after that it was time to move on to the european enclosure this is actually one of my favorite enclosures in the entire park i think it is also one of the biggest ones i here went for uh, something a bit different like a pine coastal forest or anything like that uh, we are so close to the sea uh, in here in this uh, in this place of the map uh, i thought of doing like a beach or something but i just couldn't see those animals on the beach like they didn't belong there so i decided to uh, add a lot of those pines uh, in my uh, area where i live i live by the baltic sea we have a lot of pine forests just next to the sea just next to the beaches so this is something that i wanted to sort of recreate in here and i think that in the end it looks just phenomenal uh, i will add two different water sections in here for the animals uh, i will of course also add a, a very cool like viewing uh towers for the guests that they can go in there and observe the entire uh, habitats and also the amazing view for the ocean or the sea i think it was supposed to be an ocean because i remember telling you guys in the first episode that this park was meant to be uh located somewhere in the north of california so yeah this is exactly what uh, i had in mind and after this the whole chunk of this map will be actually filled i had a blast building this i was just after my vacation to new york i just went back home and decided that the first thing that i'll finally record is the new episode of the prehistoric sea world and i am so so glad that i did that uh, as i told you after this episode we only have some uh, like uh, small parts to fill in i will of course show you this in a second in the real time parts but yeah the next episode will be the last building episode of the series which is hard to believe i really really enjoyed it and i cannot wait for the last last episode i cannot wait for the tour that i am about to record uh, that would be also really cool to see the entire park uh, and to show you all of the corners but yeah it will also be a bit sad because as i told you i just loved building this and i think that this is actually my best series yet when it comes to jurassic world evolution 2 and with that being said it is time to say goodbye to the speed build part and to meet you guys in the park to show you around in front of us there is everything that we added in today's episode so in the back we have the new european enclosure you can actually see some inguadodons uh, enjoying their time on the beach uh, we also have the new mosasaurus lagoon in here and we have the spinosaurus enclosure uh, so yeah we filled quite a big chunk of the map as you guys can see uh, we can actually to now right now see everything in detail so we have our mosasaurus maybe it will jump for the shark or not. We have both of uh, two of them in here. Uh, actually, maybe the view from this will be nice right now. Yes, look at this. Oh my god, I love this so much. The viewing domes are one of my favorite things about this game, and definitely about the lagoons. Oh my god, look at this. So close. I wish that we will have like uh, I don't know underwater tunnels or um, even more things that the guests can use to experience the, the lagoons in Jurassic World Evol Evolution 3 but of course we'll have to wait and see. So we have our two, two um, Mosasauruses living in here and uh, we also have this plaza really lovely with those like rivers of the paths just leading to uh, the viewing uh, galleries. Uh, we have some tables for the guests and of course a lot of fountains because this is the prehistoric sea world everything is all about the water uh, we also have some restaurants and this is the entrance to the underwater viewing uh, gallery and of course in here we have our spinosaurus uh, i didn't want to add the t-rex to this park because i thought that this guy is the perfect like a king or a main uh, attraction of our park uh, this is a uh, dino that was heavily associated with water and what else it could we add to the prehistoric sea world it is just perfect uh, i went for a random coloration but actually this is really cool uh, maybe the red would be could be a bit more like uh, paler but i really really like it uh, so it has this whole area just to itself uh, from this part till this part actually a lot of land uh, but the lake is also quite big 
Uh, I also love to use the lagoons as the edges of uh, the habitats because, of course, the dinos cannot just when walk through them and they are just, you know, thinking of them as the borders of the habitat, which is so, so cool. Uh, and in here we have this amazing viewing gallery that we can actually maybe hop to the first person mode uh, that you can see this whole big European enclosure uh, with the uh, Iguanodon, with the Spinosaurus, uh, not the Spinosaurus, the Stegosaurus in the back. And in here you can see the Polacanthus, one of my favorite armored dinos uh, in this game. I really like uh, this like transition from the uh, from the spikes into this armored like buck. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, it looks so amazing. And yeah, the Iguanodons are here as well. Uh, and we also have the Stegosaurus. Uh, I went for the 1997 color, uh, like uh, the body variant, uh, because I just prefer it. And also I really like this. This is the water feature uh, that is just next to the lagoon. And yeah, it looks so, so nice. So yeah, another big part of the park is filled. The only thing that we now have left is just this small part of the map. Uh, so this is something that I will focus on in the next episode, we need to connect it here. Uh, and also this part is left, so there will also be like an enclosure or two, we will build some stuff for the guests and also fill it in, also add some things in here just to not make it so empty. But yeah, this is basically all. Uh, maybe let's let me show you the map of the park, uh, of how it is growing. So yeah, this is the whole new part with the... Uh, actually big uh, enclosure for the Spinosaurus uh, and yeah of course this is the rest of the park that you could see me build throughout all of those all this time that we were building this I am still so obsessed with the entrance to this park I really really love this uh, but yeah from now on you have this amazing view for the lagoons in the back I really love it like imagine it being full to like uh, fully filled it will look so so good Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope that we'll be able to see some action with the Mosasaurus. So maybe uh, let's just stay like this for my goodbyes. Uh, okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you are uh, excited that the Mosasaurus is finally here. I had so many questions, so many requests about this to be added. And it is finally here, our main attraction of the entire park. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did and you are not yet subscribed to my channel, uh, please uh, consider to do so. Uh, leave, leave a like under the video. Uh, oh, look, yay, we are so lucky. Leave the like up there under the video. Leave me a nice comment if you enjoyed it. Uh, and if you like to support the channel a little bit extra, you can do it with the join button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!